They say that we live now perhaps in what is the golden age of television. Television that used to be sort of throwaway sitcoms or uh, interchangeable cop, lawyer, hospital dramas has been replaced for the most part by things like Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, um, House of Cards, and you know even things that like the uh, the cheesy superhero TV show has been replaced by Daredevil or Arrow. Well, one another thing that that TV has done is is it's allowed for movie franchises to have a new life in the form of a television show. To give it more space and more room to breathe. And that's what brings us to today's installment. Ash versus Evil Dead. A title that I cannot wrap my brain around why it's not Ash versus The Evil Dead. But, as you can see, I have all three seasons here. That's right, I'm not going to review them one by one because it's one show, and it is a show that is sadly now complete. Um, they're not, they decided not to renew it for a fourth season. Uh, which, to me, is kind of okay. I mean, it's a very good show, very entertaining, and I like it a lot. But it, the premise of it does wear a little thin, and you do get a feeling that there are some episodes that are just running in place and padding the runtime out to get a certain number of episodes. Uh, this perhaps could have been tighter as a trilogy of movies, as, as Evil Dead 4, 5, and 6, as opposed to a television show. There's so much good stuff in there that it's hard to make that argument because there's... But, but it does begin to feel repetitive. There's, you know, there's somebody. They get possessed. Ash has to fight them. That happens every episode. There is no episode where somebody doesn't get possessed and then a, a gonzo, bonkers, balls to the wall, fight happens. And, and again, it's, I'm not complaining about it. It's very entertaining. But it's almost... Uh, gratuitous is a good word to describe this show. And I think that even the, the makers of the show would relish that word as being uh, what they were going for. But there's gratuitous in the way of gore and everything, that, and, and that's what Evil Dead was always known for. And there's gratuitous in the way of just sort of like, okay, this has just gone on long enough. Um, Bruce Campbell does return after, what, 20... Five years, maybe? Something like that. Returns to the role of Ash Williams from uh, the Evil Dead trilogy. Um, of course, the classic second movie and the cult classic Army of Darkness. Um, Ash is perhaps the only hero to come out of the slasher genre. He's not... You know, it was a, the Evil Dead was a franchise centered around a hero as opposed to a villain, and Ash was, and still is, the perfect kind of buffoon um, to play that part. If anything, I think that one problem I also might have is that there, Bruce Campbell has has this persona now that and that's kind of what they go for as opposed to who Ash was in the movies the Ash of the TV show much older guy and far more immature you get the feeling like the guy from the first movie and even from Army of Darkness is not this big a D-bag but um they they make it work as far as entertaining. I mean, well, marathoning the Evil Dead movies is tough because no one Evil Dead movie really leads into the next very well. Uh, they all sort of have a recap, and they all don't blend at all. Um, 
So three seasons of the show, I mean, it's hard to encapsulate everything that happens in it, but it is a continuation. A Ash accidentally brings back the Evil Dead. Um, Lucy Lawless plays a demon. Ash picks up a, co a couple of sidekicks who go on their own journey, and who are great characters, by the way. I'm not sure the name of the actor and the actress who play them, but uh, really, really entertaining characters that are great foils for Ash. Um, there's fantastic fights that make you just... I mean, I'm going to go by, by season three because it's the last one I watched. There's a fight where, with like a demon baby who crawls up inside of a woman who has been decapitated and kind of puppeteers the, the decapitated woman's body and keeps popping his little cute baby head through the neck stump. And it's disgusting, but I was laughing so hard watching it. Um, you know, this is really sort of Three Stooges uh, as, as filtered through Sam Raimi, who I don't think was as involved as people might like. He, he was the producer, and he did direct at least the first episode, but, um, yeah, I don't think he was all that involved in the rest of it. I think his brother was more involved. But, um, but it does, it feels like Evil Dead. It's got the Sam Raimi, like, <laughs> cuts. And, uh, of course, the Evil Dead, you know, tracking shot, following, following uh, the characters, chasing the characters, and you never quite see what they see. Um, so it definitely feels like Evil Dead, and it's a good continuation. I would say that there are things that feel contrived. Ash gets a, a daughter in season three, and you wonder how he didn't know. He didn't even know that he was married. He was apparently married to her mother, and he doesn't, doesn't remember that. So you'd think at some point they got divorced. I mean, they, they really retcon Ash to the guy who we saw in the the... The first movie especially, who in the first movie wasn't really that big of a, of a jackass, but they really retconned him to make him like he was always this over-the-top Bruce Campbell character. Um, so, again, I mean, I, it's, it's great in that it continues Evil Dead, it gives us more. This is not a franchise that feels like it needs an end, and it doesn't get one. Uh, the final episode ends on a cliffhanger, which almost is fitting. It would be weird for uh, for an Evil Dead property to just give us a happy ending. Uh, Army of Darkness came the closest. This actually kind of honors the original ending to, to Army of Darkness, too. Um, and it just goes to show that Ash will never get to rest. Um... I would give Ash vs. Evil Dead three out of five stars. It's a very entertaining show. It's not a perfect show. There's definitely problems with it. It's not even what I would have preferred for the final outing for Ash. I mean, I always thought... They did a Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic years ago, and I always thought what this generation never got, and it's a, it's a real shame, is a... Uh, Frankenstein meets the wolf... No, not Frankenstein. We got Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, I mean, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Um, I always said Harold and Kumar meet the slashers. You know, like, bring back Robert England, Kane Hodder, Doug Bradley. Uh, you know, have, have Chucky in there. Have Leatherface. Have, um... Fuck the Leprechaun at some point, if you wanted to. Uh, Candyman and Michael Myers, bring them all back and have one big movie. But if there's one thing that would have been better than, than Harold and Kumar meet the slashers, it would have been Ash versus the slashers. And that would have been great to tie everything together, to have maybe the slashers all be deadites in some form. Um, and to just have fun with it. Not to make a great movie, but to just have this kind of wacky gonzo fun with it. Um, again, I, th I know the first two seasons are on Netflix. I'm sure the third one will be pretty soon. Um, 
it's worth watching if you're an Evil Dead fan. If you're not an Evil Dead fan, I don't think you're going to enjoy it. If you are an Evil Dead fan, you'll get something out of it, but it's not going to be exactly the ending that you wanted for, for our beloved hero.